Hi everybody, Isological, and I've got another video that incorporates the API of a different set of software with the Raspberry Pi. So, if you're following my blog, you notice that I have, uh, over the past couple of months, been working on a way to automate the growth of tomatoes. And I'm getting pretty close to finally installing pumps and building the whole apparatus because the software is almost done. But I needed a way to get updates on the plants easily. So I could have gone the route of setting up some sort of email thing or setting up a whole, like building a whole different infrastructure around sending just a little bit of data every like hour or so. Um, but instead of doing that, I decided to look into the Twitter developer API and see if I could get it working with the Raspberry Pi, and it turns out that you can. So for my bench test of this, I have a Raspberry Pi um, Model B and uh, wires connecting to an ADC, the post on how to wire. The, uh, just like all my other videos, there'll be a blog post in the description um, with all of the wiring diagrams and stuff. But this wiring diagram is pretty old. Um, I came up with this a long time ago, back when I started developing analog sensors with the Raspberry Pi. So, but that's not really what's important. So, um, the code will be in the description, um, in a blog post, and feel free to check it out there. But essentially what it does, I'll, I'll show you right here, without revealing my authentication information, basically, <clears throat> the, um, the loop of the function, which I'm using AP Scheduler to uh, fire on every, um, right now it's 30 seconds just for the demo so I can show you it happens to like how it's changing but it'll be like every hour basically what it does is it reads the um, two sensors so I have a light dependent resistor and a temperature sensor so basically it formats the data into something I can use so in this case it's a two decimal place for the um, temperature it's its degree in um, Fahrenheit to two decimal places and it's also the brightness percentage out of its maximum, uh, the maximum the sensor can read. And that's not really that useful, but it's hard to convert a, uh, LDR's readout to something like lumens um, with this the precision level that I have. So um, I just decided to go with that. But that's not really what came, you came here to see. So here is the Twitter page for the Raspberry Pi. Um, so right now... I'm going to run the program, which it should initially tweet. So the program just ran, so I'll refresh the Twitter page over here, and there you go. So the brightness is at 16 point or 18 point five five percent. The temperature is 63.82 degrees Fahrenheit. And so now I'll come over here, and you can see me covering the LDR. So we'll wait for this to fire again. It should in 30 seconds from that last tweet. And then we'll refresh and um, see that hopefully the brightness level went down. So there you go. You can see over there the brightness level. The dialog just says what it's tweeting. So in this case, uh, it tweeted 4.69% 4. out of its maximum brightness. So it's pretty dark. So I'll refresh this. And there you go, you can see that it tweeted 4.69%. Temperature is the exact same. And, um, yeah. So, instead of having to develop, spend a lot of time developing a whole different um, library and get, all, get a whole different infrastructure in place, now I can just access Twitter on pretty much any device and any relevant device I carry with me every day will have Twitter. So, like, my tablet or like my phone which I'm filming right now or my laptop I can access that data from the new from there and I'm assuming uh, I'll probably if I get come up the money for it I'll get a Raspberry Pi camera and have it somehow tweet um, pictures or something I'll try to do that because that would be really really cool but I'll keep you updated and that ha if that happens and thank you for watching and feel free to check out the blog post in the description for the source code and uh, more information about this project